Hey everybody, it's Aaron Norris with The Norris Group. It's Friday, August 26th. This is episode 319. And have you ever stayed in an Airbnb? And is Airbnb taking over your neighborhood? That and much more as we cover the biggest headlines in real estate. Do not miss the radio show and podcast. We continue with our pre I Survive Real Estate radio interviews. This uh, week is Christopher Thornburg. He is, of course, the director of the UC Riverside School of Business Administration, Center for Economic Forecasting and Development, and he's been on our radio show at least once a year and part of I Survive Real Estate several times. He's joined us to talk about quantitative easing and how the Federal Reserve will be using it and has been using it, so-called helicopter money and more. But for those of you inside the portal, both non-members and members, there is a discount to an event that they're doing in the Inland Empire called Inland Empire 2035 Planning for the Economy of Tomorrow. Uh, we've got a little bit of a discount as an affiliate with them, so check the portal under discounts. Let's get to the headlines. HUD and the Census Bureau reported a 12.4% increase in new home sales, putting them at their highest in nine years. The Mortgage Makers Association reported a 2.1% decrease in mortgage applications from last week. Existing home sales also declined last month by 3.2%, according to NAR. And the market for apartments and condos now stands at 50 after a three-point decrease. Goldman Sachs says the bloom is off the rose when it comes to real estate. Ellen Zinter from Morgan Stanley chimes in, saying that commercial permits are down, suggesting that the end of the year might be a little slower than we've experienced in past quarters. While real estate has outpaced the S&P 500 in 2016, challenges in the sector, including slower growth and risk coming from potential interest rate increase are causing a little bit of concern. But will interest rates increase? You've probably seen an update from us that we are doing a report on in February uh, 4th of 2017 called 2% mortgage rates, 30 trillion in debt, and other surprise ending. This is going to be our look uh, into the future eight years in California, what we're going to do with our real estate holdings. You are not going to want to miss that because our predictions are flying in the face of what these people are saying. That'll be interesting. FHFA is extending the HARP program in 2017 as some 300,000 still qualify for the program. And it's also preparing to launch a new refi program to release in fall of 2017. The new program will target those homeowners who are current but fall outside the current limit set by the enterprises. I have to wonder why it's gonna take them a full year to launch. The HARP program has been around forever. Regardless, the HARP program will be extended to September of 2017 with a new program uh, landing in October. But seriously, guys, if you've been behind and upside down on your home and you've been paying since 2008, you know what? You deserve a refi. That's amazing. Realtor.com released its hot real estate markets for August. It appears to be largely driven by price increases as well as speed of sales. Vallejo, California stays on the top slot, enjoying the top spot again back to back this summer. San Fran, San Diego, and Sacramento have made the top 10 in California. And actually, California made 11 of the top 20 spots. Other states in the mix include Texas, Colorado, Michigan, Indiana, Washington, and Tennessee. I worked in downtown Los Angeles at a lighting design firm for about six months before I came over to the Norris Group, and I bid on a lot of several, I bid on several condo conversion projects downtown, and it was a big deal because there wasn't a lot of residential downtown. It's not exactly a walkable city at night. Well, that is really getting changed, and it's coming from Chinese developers. Maybe they're tired of uh, spending their money in developing in China, all those ghost towns. If you haven't seen that, look it up on YouTube. It's very interesting. They have been buying up a lot of land downtown Los Angeles and building these billion dollar projects. I mean, they are huge luxury condos, hotels, retail, hospitality, and a lot of them are right around the convention center. What remains to be seen is who will buy them. Some of them have gone quickly. Some projects are like 60% full on first phases of condos, but who are, who's buying them? Is it Chinese investors looking to hide money with the slowing Chinese economy and placing it here? Is this going to have us have our own ghost town in downtown Los Angeles? Um, or will these Chinese developers lure locals? It's going to be interesting to see over the next year as some of these actually land and people start moving in. The California Assembly just passed SB 1150 and now it moves to Governor Brown's desk. So Say a husband and wife live in a home, he dies, but only his name is on a loan. She makes a payment, but because of reduced incomes with his passing, uh, she asks for a loan modif modification. Well, she isn't on the loan and the bank won't talk to her, and so the foreclosure process begins. So uh, it's not exactly ideal, and this bill is going to help modify the homeowner bill of rights that they created here in California. And the new legislation is really to help widows, widowers, domestic partners, surviving children, and other heirs who have a surviving interest in a property. So let's see if this moves forward. I have a feeling it will. So Airbnb was created back in 2008, is now worth upwards of $25 billion. Users are renting out couches, rooms, entire houses, and even luxury villas 
all over the world. Well, local governments have sort of been chiming in and putting the kibosh on the fund by getting rid of short-term rentals, making them illegal, or levying some pretty hefty taxes, well, or those that hotels have to pay anyway. Government entities fear it's making an exacerbated affordability issue even worse because landlords are kicking out tenants and opting for these short-term rates, which are a lot higher. Um, so, And this is a big deal. So when I was in Venice this uh, summer in Italy, talked to a local, he's saying that the population has been halved over the last decade because of vacation rentals. Locals can't afford to live there anymore. So these vacation rentals can drastically change an area. So there are even companies, one being host compliance, that goes after these companies where they're illegal in specific cities so the government entities can go after them with big fines. So how do you solve this? Um, if you've never been in an Airbnb, I love it. It's a very cool service, but I can understand the issue. What do you think the solution is? Do you get rid of it? Do you tax the heck out of it? What do you do? I would love to hear your input below. If you're on YouTube, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a beat. If you're on Facebook, please don't forget to not only like the Norris Group page, but don't forget to add us to your C first list and with notifications on. Leave your comments below the video and if we miss something share the story on our comment sections on either YouTube or Facebook and we'll make sure to include it on our blog at thenorrisgroup.com forward slash blog. We would love to see you at one of the upcoming events that we're going to be chatting at. September 20th, the AOA Million Dollar Trade Show and Landlording Conference. That's going to be in LA. September 21st, stay put, cash out, or change seats. One of the last times you're going to be hearing this talk, and it's been one of my favorites, we'll be doing that at Invest Club for Women in Irvine. And the following week, the 28th, we'll be in Glendale doing the same talk with Invest Club for Women and Robert Hall and Associates. October 6th, we're going to be back up in San Jose area doing the same talk with SJREI. October 8th, we're bringing back Cashing In on a Boom. It sold out in February here in Southern California, so we're taking it to Irvine this time with Invest Club for Women. Check the website on how to sign up. October 21st, I Survive Real Estate. I've got 10 seats left. That's all. You guys have sold us out earlier than ever. S thank you so much, sponsors, for coming in early this year. It makes my job easier, and we really appreciate your support, and the panel is awesome. Check it out at isurvivedrealestate.com. And November 5th, Cutting Edge Financial Tactics Brunch just is really aimed more at people looking to do some passive investing with trustees, but we also have Udirect IRA, Keystone CPA, and uh, Bill Exeter with Exeter Exchange talking about 1031 exchanges. If you're interested in that, check it out on the website. And November 6th, our third annual TNG VIP subscriber brunch. If you're a subscriber, we'd love to invite you to the Mission Inn for a lovely half day of education and a beautiful brunch at the Mission Inn Hotel and Spa. We hope to see you there. For more information on hard money loans, including fix and flip, buy and hold, and new construction, starting at only 6.9%, which is amazing, check out thenorrisgroup.com. We're even lending in Sac Sacramento now. So check that out. Uh, for more information on passive investing with trustees, check out tngtrustees.com. With that, have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next week.